Next, let's move on to the session for a special lecture presented by Professor Kei Saito. He is an associate professor, faculty of urban life studies. The title of his talk is How We Design the Historic Landscape in Tokyo to Ease the Heat of Summer Together with Protecting Them. Dr. Saito, please. Okay, thank you very much, Homa Sensei. I'm Kei Saito. I'm from Faculty of Urban Life Studies in Tokyo City University. So today, I'm going to have a short lecture, lecture input, which is entitled Urban Development and the Related Issues and the Conservation of Environment and the Landscape in Tokyo. First of all, I would like to explain about the trend of population in urban areas. The share of the Asian population living in urban areas has grown from 32% in 1990 to 40% to 42% in 2010. So according to the, the United Nations, by 2026, the half of Asian people will be city dwellers. The diagram shows that the, the population, urban population in Asia from 1990 to 2025, you can see that the population is, is gradually increased from 1990 to, 1990 to 2025. Then our daily life in developed urban area has become more and more convenient nowadays. But we have traded the vernacular cultural landscape or cultural uh, resources or rich natural environment or traditional living circumstances and so on and so forth for rapid urban development and growth in current. I'm going to explain about the, the urban uh, environmental issues. As you can see these pictures, for example, sometimes the landslide and the flash flight due to heavy rain happens, not only the natural areas, but also the urban areas as well. And uh, the deterioration of heat environment due to an artificial surface or high lights and density growth. Later, I will explain more about this. And the fragmentation of living environment and the landscape destruction sometimes, so as you can see this image, due to, uh, for example, express highways. Our daily life is becoming more convenient, but sometimes those kind of problems happen and the poor pedestrian environment due to our car-centric development. All those problems easily can be seen, especially in the housing areas in Tokyo as well. And in harmonious building design and colors for a local historical context. These areas are originally very historical areas, but nowadays, you can see the, those highlighted buildings as a kind of background. And uh, sometimes those billboard advertisement and the mural paintings or vandalism can be seen in the town. Yeah, sometimes uh, some of you may have a kind of image, typical image of Tokyo or Akihabara Yes, sometimes uh, it's good for uh, making kind of identity of the town, but at the same time, sometimes those kind of advertisement will be a kind of noise of the landscape. A wide variety of urban environmental issues have been caused depending each country or depending on the each regions. So most probably, the similar issues can be seen in your country or in your town too. So as a background, uh, today I'm going to 
focus on the kind of conservation of urban environment and urban landscape scenery, especially uh, the focusing on the urban heat environment in CBD. CBD stands for Central Business District. The firstly, I'm going to explain about the, the rising temperature in Tokyo areas. So summer temperature in Tokyo is getting increased because of further urbanization and global warming nowadays. And some researchers say that Tokyo's climate zone is changing from yeah, normal humid subtropical climate. And nowadays it becomes tropical climate only, especially in summer seasons. The, this diagram shows that uh, temperature rising in this 100 years from 1907 to 2007. As you can see, the temperature around Tokyo is getting higher from around 21 degrees Celsius to 23 or 24 degrees Celsius. Then, especially around 60 to 80s, at that time, the, in Japan, is economic, economical booming the sometimes priority had been given to urban development rather than environmental protection and the landscape conservation in Tokyo areas. And nowadays, summer temperature in Tokyo is getting so high, especially in urbanized and downtown areas in Tokyo. And it's sometimes dangerously hot with anthropogenic heat or covered by impermeable surface or high-rised and density development with less green. Then based on those backgrounds, I'm putting more effort to balance between urban development and environmental protection. Landscape conservation is very, very important, essential for creating more vibrant, more healthy, and sustainable town in the future. So let's see the case study a Marunouchi area in Tokyo. I'm going to share with you some information in the Marunouchi areas. And this map shows that greater Tokyo areas. And here is the central Tokyo. Then if you have opportunity in the future, if you come a visit to Tokyo, maybe most of you will be landed in here, Haneda Airport, here. And now we are here in Tokyo, in the surround uh, fringe of the Tokyo areas. Now we are here. Then the place now I'm going to explain, the Marunouchi area is very central, center of the Tokyo here. Then um, there is uh, 30, approximately 30, 13 kilometers from TCU campus to the Marunouchi areas. It takes around 45 minutes or one hour by train. Then I'm going to explain about the two zones. First one is surrounding Tokyo Central Station. There is a Tokyo Central Station around here. And one more is uh, Nakadori. Nakadori is uh, Mid Street in English. Then first one in the surrounding Tokyo Central Station, of course there are a lot of buildings because here is a CBD areas, Central Business District. And the, some images, the left hand side is almost 100 years ago yeah, at that time, of course, there were, a, there were a lot of buildings, but the building height is regulated within 31 meters. There is a kind of regulation, the height controls. And then uh, this is uh, limited in 100 shaku. Shaku is an old unit in Japan, equivalent to 31 meters. So therefore, uh, most of the, the building's height is 
is limited in 31 meters. And after 100 years, the current situation, now also you can see this 31 meters. The many buildings are 31 meter height, serving as a reminder of the previous orderly skylines. This is the central Tokyo, and there are a lot of high-rise buildings, but most of the building has a kind of 31 meters, 31 meters, 31 meters, or the lower part. When constructing new building, the lower level often retain historical portion of all the buildings. These are another example considering local context. Daiichi Life Group's buildings built in 1938. They also have 31 meters. And this is a Tokyo Central Post Office, old office, 1931. They also have 31 meters height buildings. And then they build new building behind the old building. And this building also, 1920, is also the same, 31 meters. And this building also, 1934, you can see this 31 meters. They intentionally keep the old landscape, historical context. They conserve the landscape. And another one is Nakadori, Mid Street, here. Then uh, there are some images. The left hand side is uh, almost 100 years ago, and the center one is 50 to 60 years ago, and this is current situation. The photo is taken on the same street. And at that time, uh, this is a CBD areas. Of course, there are a lot of people, many workers in the, the daytime and weekday. But in the evening, I mean, after the business hours, almost no people, like a kind of ghost town. But currently, this right-hand side photo shows that a lot of people come here and enjoy the street because they change the image and some designs of the street. The upper image is a B4 setting, the six meter for pedestrian and the nine meter for cars, vehicles. So it means that car-centric kind of development. And then they change. The, the bottom uh, image shows that seven meter for pedestrian and seven meter for vehicle, and the same seven meter, the, the other side. And then, the before one, there is a kind of gap between pedestrian level and vehicle, vehicle range. But the after one is almost flat. The people can easily across the street. And then they put the, the big canopies planting. And then they enjoy the, the, the strolling the street. And then there are a lot of uh, green plantings, as well as the street furniture and also sculptures, so that the people can really enjoy the strolling the street. As you can see, the, of course, as you know, the big trees that the, which has a big canopy cast or provide the shaded areas under the trees, and then many people can easily walk around there with a kind of cool environment, even in the summer time, in the summer seasons. And a lot of people bring on lunch, and they have there, and enjoy the, the lunch time or, or conversation with, the, with their friends. And also, 
as you can see, th this street called, is called Urban Terrace. And in the uh, daytime from 11 to 3 p.m., weekday, and the weekend, 11 to 5 p.m., they block the street. So it means that vehicle cannot go in, then street is 100% opened for the pedestrian. The people can sit in there and enjoy the conversations and a lot of activity there. And another topic is the new green infra infrastructure technology, coolness even in summer. So this is uh, in front of the central station, Tokyo stations. As you can see, there is a sort of um, water surface in front of the Tokyo stations. There is a big open spaces, especially in summer, summer summer season, and do you know this kind of small camera? And then I attach this camera into my smartphone, something like that. And then I take these photos. Then I can see the summer image of the, the, the in front of the buildings. Then you can see the differences of the temperatures surface temperatures in the three different materials. This, is a, this part is the concrete or asphalt, and this part is the grass, and this part is uh, water surfaces. And as you can see, the differences of the surface temperatures. Actually, this, uh, the day I took the photos, that uh, at that time is uh, under a cloudy day, so therefore, asphalt is not, not so high, but in the sunny, sunny days, sometimes the surface temperature of the asphalt will be rise um, up to 50 to 60 degrees Celsius. But the, the surface temperature of the grass or water is more of the same, 30 something. People can feel the kind of coolness from the grass and, and the water surfaces. Yeah, something like that. Now, at that time, that a lot of family came to these areas. And then, as you can see, the kids are praying in the water surface. This is a signage of water cooling system. This system is designed to sprinkle water over the square to lower the temperature to make it comfortable and the refreshing space. Depths about 5 mm. They will take care of environment by using filtering of tap water repeatedly, which means that very environmental friendly system. And another cooling system is greenly wrapped pillar with evaporative cooling techniques. The, at the brick square, brick square is very close to the central Tokyo station. As you can see, this kind of this, um, wrapped pillar with the kind of um, water mist. Then there are a lot of similar pillars in the Nakadori, the mid street. Then people can feel the coolness from this kind of water mist. This is also one of the new technology to cool down the urban temperatures, urban heat environment. As I mentioned to you before, the Marunouchi area in Tokyo, this area is the carefully conserving previous uh, town image or original town image of well-organized surrounding scenery and streetscape, and making a big effort to mitigate UHI, urban heat island phenomenon, through environmental design, such as street planting or vertical green walls and water cooling system, et cetera. And actually here, the Marunouchi area is one of the most advanced, advanced or sophisticated areas 
from the aspect of conser conservation of urban environment and landscape in Tokyo. So we really do hope that you can visit there and have experience and you can enjoy the setting and atm atmosphere in near futures. That's all for my uh, lectures. Thank you very much.